How you doing Kelly Crowd? The Pike push-up is a favorite on this channel, great for building the shoulders and developing strength for some amazing skills, but it is deceptively difficult to do and even harder to progress. I have a full tutorial on exactly how to do the Pike push-up right here somewhere. I'll link it in the description below as well. Definitely check it out as it will make more sense of this video as well. But I have had a lot of people in the comment section telling me that they only feel the Pike push-up when they flare their arms out to the side, which we have said on this channel many times is a big no-no. So today I'm gonna to be going through the single best thing you can do if you are not feeling this exercise where you should be when you're using proper form. But first, try this experiment with me. Stand up and hold your arms out in front of you, shoulder width like a zombie. Now grab something relatively heavy in one hand, a lightweight, a big book, I'm using resistance band, but just make a mental note of what muscles are having to work to keep that arm straight in front of you. Next, stand with your arms out to the side and do the same thing. So resistance band or weight in one hand. And again, make a mental note of what muscles are firing to keep that arm up and straight. Let me know in the comment section what muscles you feel being recruited when you do this. Okay, what I'm expecting is that when you have your arms out in front of you, you feel the anterior delts and chest tense up in resistance to the downward force in your hand. Whereas when you have your arms out to the side, you would have felt it more in your rear delts and lateral delts. And depending on how you did it, you may even have experienced a bit of pain in the shoulder. So how does this experiment apply to the pike? push up. Well, elbows bent or elbows locked, it really doesn't matter. What's going on at the shoulder is exactly the same. We've just shown that moving our arms in the sagittal plane, so forwards and backwards, is the best way to target the chest and anterior delts, which means flaring our arms out, aka taking them to the side, is not only removing some of that benefit, but increasing the chances of injury. A big culprit of supraspinatus impingement is loading the rotator cuff while the shoulder is being internally rotated. And if you think about the position of the shoulder at the bottom of a pike push-up with the arms flared out, you can see that we have that internal rotation that we don't want. Compare that to when we have the elbows pointed back and tucked in close to the body. And now we can get those shoulders in a position where they can be kept safe from that supraspinatus impingement. But this information is all well and good. What if you still cannot feel the pike push-up in the shoulders even with all this in mind. Well, the fix for that is actually isometrics. Your muscles don't understand pike push-ups or any form of exercise for that matter. They only speak one language and that language is tension. If a movement is unfamiliar, it can be very difficult for the central nervous system to understand what muscles should be turning on. This is especially apparent when there are strength imbalances between different muscle groups. Say for example, if your triceps are particularly stronger than your shoulders and they want to take over in the pike push-up. What we want to do then is get into the bottom of the pike push-up and hold yourself so that your head is just off the floor. All the same pike push-up cues apply. So hand shoulder width apart, visualizing screwing in the hand so that the elbows point back, hips stacked up high, and just move about slightly until you feel your shoulders and upper chest switch on. Maybe you'll need to depress the shoulders and get them away from your ears more. Maybe you're showing too much of your chest to the ground and turning this more into a chest exercise. With me, I know that I feel this most when I am on my tiptoes, really pushing to get those hips high above my shoulders. Once you start to recognize that you're recruiting the shoulders and your chest, hold it there, breathe, and just perform this isometric for reps until you're confident that you can perform the full pipe push-up targeting the shoulders and chest. Isometrics are a great way to get the body used to creating tension where we want it. And in the case of the pipe push-up, we can really start to experiment with where we want to feel that tension. So we can build the sort of pushing strength we want to start spilling over into some really cool stuff. Another tip with this is make sure you're filming yourself. It can be very, very strange looking back at footage of yourself where you thought you were doing something and it turns out you're doing something completely different. Like I said, I've got a full tutorial on the pike push-up, so I really don't want to linger too much on the cues in this video, but give the pike push-up isometric a go and let me know in the comment section how it works for you. And guys, I will see you in the next one. Peace.